Hello everybody. Welcome back to Crafting with Lucretia where this is the first edition of Book Talk. Let's get right into it. I have my notes. So this is a conversation. Obviously you get to see my real face. Hi, this is what I look like. Welcome. I'm Crafting with Lucretia. This is my book talk where I'm going to be telling you what all I've been reading in my book clubs. Um, what all has been suggested, authors have been suggested, uh, if I get to meet any authors during that month, yada, yada, yada. Library news, okay? Maybe you're into books. Maybe you're a bookworm like me. I don't know. I don't know you that well. But if you are, listen up. You may find one that, you know, you might want to try a new author. You might try to look for these books. Now, I will be telling you the name of the book and the author of the book. And overlooked my hair because I brushed it and it just, yeah, it overlooked the hair. <laughs> so, our first book. Now, these are the books that I'm reading for, uh, or actually listening to, because I do more audio books than I do anything, because I'm in here diamond painting, right? You guys know my crafty channel, right? So, my October books that I'm reading for the Library Club, one is for the Baker's Book Club, and it's called Above the Bay of Angels by Rias Bowen, or Rias Bowen, R-H-Y-S Bowen, B-O-W-E-N, okay? So, let me, let me read you the, a couple of the reviews. Sweeping and intimate, warm and gripping, I loved it, said Louise Penny from the number one New York Times best-selling author of the Chief Inspector Gam Gamachoch novels. Okay, another person says, a simple, a single twist of fate Puts a servant girl to work in Queen Victoria's, the Queen Victoria's Royal Kitchen. Reading is not my thing, y'all. Okay. <laughs> Royal Kitchen setting off a suspenseful historic mystery for the New York Times best-selling author of The Two Sin, Child in the Victory Garden. Okay, well, I'm listening to it now, and it better start speeding up because it's kind of slow. <laughs> so here's, here's what the book is supposed to be about, Okay. Isabella Waverly only means to comfort the woman who fell on a London street. In her final dying moments, the lady thrust a, le a letter into Bella's hand. It's an offer for employment in the, in the kitchen of Buckingham Palace, and everything the budding young chef desperately wants, an escape from her constrictions of her life as a lowly servant, in the stranger's stead, Bella can spread her wings. Arriving as Helen Barton from Yorkshire, she pursues her passion for creating culinary delights served to the delighted Queen Victoria herself. Best of all, she's been chosen to accompany the Queen to Nice. What fortune! Until the threat of blackmail shadows Bella to the Riviera, shadows Bella to the Riviera, and a member of the Queen's retinue, retinue falls ill and she dies. Uh oh. Having prepared the royal guest's last meal, Bella is a suspected of the poisonous crime. An investigation is sure to follow. You know they're going to find out who did it. Her charade will be over and her new life will come crashing down. If it doesn't get her sent to the gallows. Ooh, ooh. Well, the middle part sounds like it's going to be good. Now if it just get there because it's a slow starting book for me. Either that or it's because it's an audio book and the audio person that reads it has just kind of got a low monotone voice and it's just very, very, you know, hard to listen to. <laughs> it better pick up, though. That's the one I'm currently listening to. Okay, my other book that I, I have to read for the Inspirational Book Club is called The Co Cold Light of Day by Elizabeth Go Goddard. Goddard. G-O-D-D-A-R-D. -D -D okay, Elizabeth Goddard. Goddard. I, I'm going to say Goddard. I'm probably butchering it. I'm sorry, Elizabeth. This is going to give me practice of saying these last names, people. Yes. Okay, so the synopsis on this one is Police, sh Police Chief Autumn Long is fighting to keep her job in the quiet Alaska town of Shadow Gap when an unexpected string of criminal activity leaves her with a wounded officer, unexplained murders, and even an attack on her own father. Despite her mistrust of outsiders, she turns to Greer Brenner, a newcomer who seems to have the skills and training Autumn needs to face this threat to her community. Next page, please. Okay. Greer is in Alaska for the same reason so many others are, to disappear. That, that sounds ominous, doesn't it? 
When Chief Long enlists his help, he emerges from the shadows and proves his mettle. But his presence in her life could be a deadly trap for them both. If his secret is exposed, all will be lost, and he's not even sure Autumn could save him. As the stakes rise and the dangers increase, Autumn and Greer, Greer must rely on each other to extinguish the deadly threats. In this first installment of the Missing in Alaska series, Goddard weaves a gripping mystery set in southeast Alaska. Readers will be eager for the next in the series, says Publishers Weekly. Okay. The first book in Goddard's Missing in Alaska series will keep readers glued to their seats as the tension escalates, writes book list. We, we'll see. I haven't started this one yet, but by, by the synopsis, it sounds sounds interesting. I might, I'm, I might have to listen to it anyway, but, you know, I might like it. Sounds kind of like up my tea. All right, now, these are the, these next two books are the ones we read for this last month, so I'm kind of trying to get you caught up on, on stuff. These were the last months, and we've already had the book discussions, and so I can tell you, you know, a little bit more about them, because I actually remember them. <laughs> I haven't read the other two. So, when I fall in, this one was um, the inspirational book. When I Fall in Love by Susan May Warren Baker, oh, that was the Baker's Book Club. I'm sorry, that's the Baker's Book. Of course it is. We had coconut macadamia cake. Man, that was good. <laughs> so Hawaii was the last place Grace ever imagined she'd vacation, much less fall in love. But when her family surprises her with a cooking retreat in paradise, she is pulled, or maybe yanked, definitely yanked, away from her predictable safe life and thrown headfirst into the adventure of a lifetime. Max Sharp may make his living on the ice as a pro hockey player, but he feels most at home in the kitchen. Which is why he lives for the three-week culinary vacation he takes, takes each year in Hawaii. You, 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 you see something going on here? Yes, yes. Upon being paired with Grace for a cooking competition, Max finds himself drawn to her passion, confidence, and perseverance. But just when Grace dares to dream the dares to dream of a future beyond her hometown, Max pulls away. Wrestling with personal demons, Max fights hard against opening his heart to a love he knows sh he should never hope for. As his secrets unfold, Grace is torn between the safe path in front of her and what her heart truly desires. If love means sacrificing her ideal happily ever after, Grace's faith will face its toughest test yet. And yes, it does. Because I've read this book. I love this book. I'm always on... on on face not Facebook but Food Network watching these little competitions much like this and uh, like a wor world's worst cook and all these other you know what are they making like now I'm watching uh, binge watching uh, Halloween baking you know because it's getting to be seasonal type stuff um, I really did like this book I'm not gonna tell you a whole, whole lot about it but Max has his secret is a medical condition that Basically, yeah, he, he's he got a lethal medical condition and only limited time left to live. And so, yeah, juggling that with what he knows with cooking and falling in love, you know, you can kind of put two and two together and he doesn't want to fall in love, but he does. He does. Ah, it's a good book. Go go read it. Go, go find a library and, and go find that book, whether you like cooking or not. Now, like I just mentioned, for Baker's Book Club, we take something out of the book that we read, and we get to make it. So for this one, in this book, in this one recipe competition that they're talking about, um, the girl makes her coconut macadamia cake, okay? Now, our hostess, which was the librarian at the moment, uh, she couldn't find a, a recipe for macadamia cake, or uh, macadamia nut cake or coconut macadamia cake she made it into a loaf pan y'all and, and our meeting is like 10 o'clock in in the morning on on set days and um so you know everyone brings coffee anyway so this was like the perfect little thing to our little cup of coffee that we got upstairs because our our library has library has a, a coffee cup and they sell keurigs for like a dollar so they sell cups of coffee for a dollar of course there's a a nice little coffee shop around the corner that also sells coffee that, you know, Lucy is very fond of. <laughs> Just saying. But the coconut macadamia, and I'm not a fond of coconut. I'm not really into coconut, but it was such a mild coconut 
that it just tasted wonderful. I mean, it was it was wonderful. I tasted more of the macadamia nut than than I did the coconut. It was really really good. So go to All Recipes. And I need to go to All Recipes and find you a coconut macadamia loaf bread. Okay, that's that's what the librarian used, and uh, that that was really good. That reminds me, I need to write that down myself. So that was a really good book. Okay, our last book that we're going to talk about is called, it was for our inspirational book. Now this one is for the inspirational. The other one is for Baker's Eye. Tongue tied, okay, tongue tied. So this last book is gonna be called Another Dawn by Katherine Cushman. Now this is part of a series of eight books. This was number one, I believe. So this is what this is. This book is about. And this was, again, I've read this one. It was a really good read. I'll, I'll tell you more about it in a minute. Hang on, let me read this to you. Grace Graham is back in Tennessee with her four-year-old son on a short unpaid, unpaid leave from work. Helping her father recover from surgery and spending some, some time with her sister, Shoal Creek seems more backward than ever after her years in California. And it's hard to find organic food anywhere. When the unthinkable happens and her son is diagnosed with measles, Grace's fears over modern medicine take a dangerous turn worse the town has fallen into quarantine and its residents focus their anger and blame on Grace. She is alone and scared until one brave woman cho chooses to reach out a hand of forgiveness and mercy. But when the outbreak takes a life-threatening turn, will Grace be able to forgive herself? Another question, will her sister be able to forgive herself? You'll, you'll, I'll, I'll tell you about that in a minute. So what I liked about this book, well, what made me think of, of, and I didn't pick this book. I was just picked by one of the other ones. But it made me think of, of the COVID back when we had COVID two or three years ago. Now, this was measles, but, you know, I'm, it, it kind of went hand in hand, you know. Places got quarantined. Places shut down. Jobs shut down. Um... You know, families got had to get together and bicker, and, and people still had to have surgeries here and there. Uh, they still needed medical care. They still came down with the illness, okay? Uh, unfortunately, not everyone lives through this book or through COVID, but um, it, it is a very interesting, it was a very interesting book, and it kind of made you think, what would be your, your uh, what side would you be on? Would you be pro-vaccination? Would you be more natural remedies? Or are you somewhere in between? Do you want to do some medical, but some natural? Some, you know, what's, what side do you have to be on when it comes to vaccinations? And I know, touchy topic for the first book. This is just what the book was about, okay? You don't have to leave nasty comments down below. If you don't like the book or if it's not for you, just, just fast forward. It's fine. I'm just doing book reviews of what we've read. But I thoroughly love the book. It was written very well. H Catherine Cushman, uh, I've read her before, and she writes a good book, as well as the one that wrote, um, oh, what book was it, the other? Susan May Warren, she wrote the book about the, about the chefs, okay, the two chefs in Hawaii. I need to find out if there's more in that one because that, that was a really good I wonder if that was a more of the way it ended it kind of left it open for maybe a series so I need to find out if that's a series book but anyway that's what I've been reading what have you been reading down below leave me a note any book suggestions leave them leave them down below and while you're there if you like the new book talk like share subscribe I'll see you in the next one bye